greetings, and how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a, it's a wonderfully nice, beautiful day here in uh, California. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'm just uh, waiting around for all these interviews. I'm really stoked to do them. Nice, nice. So Suicide Silence is about to release a uh, new self-titled record. Uh, how are you guys uh, feeling about yeah. that? Uh, I'm very excited, man. <laughs> um, as you should feel when you're um, when you're about to release your, uh, your hard work, you know. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's a uh, it's a very exciting time. Uh, the whole band is uh, really pumped at the uh, reactions, and um, uh, we're uh, excited to see even more reactions. We're excited to see the, the public uh, be able to hear the whole record, um, which is going to take them through a lot of ups and downs, you know. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. So <clears throat> let's dive into Doris. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I would never normally interject a personal opinion into uh, opinion into an interview, but I think it, at this point it a- adds weight to the question I'm about to ask. So though I really have always appreciated Suicide Silence, I've never really been a huge fan of the music just for the style. That being said, I really dug Doris. Um, it has a, you know almost like a Deftones feel to it at times, and mm-hmm. it keeps it heavy too. Um, in the clean vocals, they really catch you by surprise, but they add a lot of depth and emotion to the song. Do you think that any of the negative reactions to this new song stem from people just comparing Doris too closely to your previous work and need to warm up to the idea of Suicide Silence going in a different direction? I, I, um, the, the, the beautiful thing about what's been going on on the internet is um, that we're, uh, we're able to really see uh, the, 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 the fans, the Deathcore fans, for what's, uh, what's really going on, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I think that the, the the biggest issue with um, the the deathcore fans is that they're so trained to listen to really really polished music, really really sterile music. Mm-hmm. Um, and by that, I, I I mean just music that's made to afford the size of our subculture. Um, the the, um, the fact is, um, the music industry a is suffering uh it's been suffering with that's a, a really known fact mm. um cd sales don't just just don't happen anymore um people can download the, the the music for free wherever they can find it if they are willing enough to look or they can just stream it from some streaming service they have on their phone mm-hmm. um and while you know streaming services are you know forking over some of their profits uh they're not really giving musicians their due their due uh, take, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not a very fair uh, world. So, I mean, us musicians, we just don't have, you know, the resources to spend $100,000 on a record, you know? Mm. Like, it's just that those, day, those days are long gone, you know? The, the days of people actually going out and purchasing music because that was the only way of finding music, those are they're gone now. So, it's become so, um, so easy that um, uh, it makes it, difficult for us as musicians to really um, express ourselves in a way that isn't um, quantized and, uh, you know, uh, replaced by cheap sounds. Mm. Um, now, that being said, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw shade on any, uh, any um, you know, uh, recording methods. Um, I think that if you have something to express and the only way you see fit is to do it in this manner, you know, that's cool. But at the same time, you have to, as a musician, get to a point where um, the replaced sounds and uh, reamped guitars and, uh, you know, solid state um, amplifiers and uh, punched in vocals um, just don't really hit the mark anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the biggest thing is when we stepped into this studio to record this record was we wanted to create real sounds. And um, the, that reality and that, 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 that power that comes with true noise, it, it, it isn't something that this fan base is, is trained for. It, it, it's not even trained. It's not something they're used to. So obviously the reactions are going to be very um, odd and off-putting. It's not going to be something that people are going to listen to right away and get. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we knew that going in. You know, we expected that. 
So, I mean, the reaction for us isn't really out of pocket. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, exa- pretty much exactly what we wanted. If anything, it's a little bit more than what we expected, and that's a beautiful thing. Mm. <clears throat> so, uh, generally speaking, bands tend to, uh, you know, put out self-titled album when they either plan on starting fresh with a new kind of sound, or you know, are celebrating almost like a milestone in their career. What was the trigger for you guys to um, self-title your new album? Well, I mean, with uh, with Mitch's passing, you know, the, the band changed. It, mm. it became something new just automatically. Um, I mean, not to go too far, just changing a, a member in the band makes it a whole different entity. Um, the, re- the, 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 the reality is that uh, the band is a completely new force. You know, it's been changed by tragedy and it's forced us to to come to a new point of appreciation you know the things that um, the things that we've succumbed to uh, like anger and pain they're the same but they're different in the sense that they're coming from a a, a less um, a less ungrateful place Uh, it's coming from life in general you know the balance of life so um, able to speak on it with this new understanding it, it creates a, a new energy out of us you know it creates, creates a new point of view in the sense of where we're writing um, our music from uh, so I mean we're just trying to tell the fans that this is what Suicide Silence is now mm-hmm. very obviously and in the in the not so obvious way in the kind of artistic way is we return to the name and we really tried to find a meaning for it. Uh, in the past, we've always said, you know, Suicide Silence is uh, just a name that was drawn by our guitarist Garza in his notebook when he was in high school, and, you know, it just stuck. Um, which is true, but at the same time, you know, the, the name has become a meaning for a lot of people. You know, Suicide Silence has meant fearlessness, um, and the Suicide Silence name has always stood for uh, being able to stand up for yourself and what you believe in and who you are. Mm. Uh, So the fact is, is now we're saying that the name Suicide Silence is something that is bigger than us. It is the death of the ego, which is um, putting yourself first. It is understanding that this world is a lot bigger, and that is why we serve the music. It's we're here to create this band that is here to show you that um, your personal life is yours, and you should admire uh, that, and you should feel grateful for who you are. But at the same time, when you do things in life, you should take yourself out of the picture and do them for the love of humanity, for the love of uh, being alive. And... um, that was always a message that Mitch was trying to express as well. Um, you can hear it in all of his lyrics, you know, it's finding the, the positivity through negativity and moving forward and, you know, making the best of every single day. Uh, all those things are the basis of who we are as a band. And um, right now is the perfect time for us to make that statement clear. Absolutely, man. So, um, I unfortunately haven't uh, been able to check out the the new album's entirety, only the Doris uh, single. And like I said, I actually dug that. Um, so I, my question is, is the new album going to be more like the Doris single, or is it going to be mostly traditional Suicide Silence sound with uh, some sort of experimental stuff thrown in? I, uh, I think every song has a traditional Suicide Silence element. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, Doris has a really tripped out, like... Uh, bridge part which is in a lot of Suicide Zone songs it has the heavy um, heavy riff um, as the verse you know the little things like that that are small you know nods um, of our hat to our previous selves um, but when it comes down to it this was this was the record where we felt like if we made any kind of decision based on we should keep this traditional, we should totally um, seek approval of 
of fans by doing something that we are used to doing, it it would have been a regression in uh, in ourselves. Mm. It would have been something based in fear, and uh, that's something that we wanted to avoid. Uh, it, it was something that we knew that if we sat on our hinds at all, that um, this band would fall apart. Um, it, it's it's not what we're here to do. We're here to challenge ourselves every single day, and by ourselves, I also mean our fans. <clears throat> so that's what we're here to do. We're here to we're here to awaken ears. We're here to awaken minds. Absolutely, man. That's a great way to go. Um, so a few weeks ago, we had a chat with Sepultura's Der- uh, Derek Green, and uh, he explained how he's developed as a vocalist after working with Ross Robinson. Uh, even Andreas Kisser said the same, uh, that once you work with Ross, you have almost a different approach to your vocals and realize the magic of what you can execute. Now, you work with him pretty closely on this record, so how was your experience? It was two months of hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, there's nothing worse in this world than your mind can create. Um, uh, the mind is powerful enough to create cancer, mm. uh, to, to create um, issues in your own system. So, I mean, you can, you can fathom how deep, uh, how deep your hell can go when you are uh, given nothing but yourself to be with. Um, being in that house um, and seeing Ross every day was um, like waking up and just looking at a mirror. Um, Ross is really good at reflecting um, yourself onto you. He's a uh, he's one of the. That's what makes a teacher a teacher. That's what makes a uh, um, master a master. Mm-hmm. Is their ability to um, take themselves and their own thoughts out of the picture and be able to, with knowledge, um, show you yourself. Uh, the, the, the fact is, is when you're forced to be in that place for two months straight, you lose your mind. It's not, uh, it's not something that, um, I would recommend to people that have a, a job to do every day. Uh, it's, uh, you you do end up going crazy. I mean, I was hallucinating. I was seeing ghosts completely sober. I was sober for two months, and every single day, you know, I would wake up and I would meditate, and uh, it, it it would put me in this place of feeling all right with myself. And then loss would come in and just tear me apart. And I don't mean that in like a negative way. Mm. I wouldn't come in and just be like you're an asshole. <laughs> he would he would challenge me. He would question every thing that I did, every movement, down to the very, very bottom of my soul, and he would ask me to, to explain why. And um, when you're asked to do that, it, 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 it forces reality out of you, it, it forces hell out of you, it forces all the negative, it forces all of that to be dealt with, and you move forward, and you mature, and you grow. So um, I would say that it's more than just a singer. Um, as a singer, you know, if anything, he helped me um, achieve a level of gratitude towards the, the music and towards everything that I've done in my life that I've never had before. It really helped me mature as, in, as a person, as a, as, a, as a human being. It was, a, it, as much as it was hell and it was torturous, it, it was very much a, an experience that I needed and I loved, I loved every second of it. Awesome, man. Awesome. It sounds like a hell of an experience. Um, (laughs) So myself, as an artist and musician, I understand the need to explore different sounds, and it really let the music take its course. But some fans, however, are not so open-minded. So how far astray from the original Suicide Silence sound do you think you guys could venture before your your core fan base abandons you? Or do you think your core fans would really follow you wherever you take them musically? Uh, I think uh, most of the fans are, are are down for the change. I think most of them are not really that big of deathcore fans, to be honest. Uh, I, I think that, I mean, from what I've seen on the internet, the, the numbers of deathcore fans are very minimal compared to the people who actually listen to music all the time. You know, um, 
Deathcore fans are great, and I, you know, I'm, I owe a lot to them. But at the same time, I am also <clears throat> searching for, uh, I guess you could say, searching for my own uh, place of gratitude, and mm-hmm. I, I want to make myself a fan, you know. Um, and honestly, like <clears throat> continuously giving to to, to the, the Deathcore fan base is um, something that I've, I've already done. I, I've given. Uh, you know, with my career, with All Shall Perish and Suicide Silence, I've given plenty, and um, it's time for me to be a little selfish. You know, I want to, I want to explore music, and I want to create things that um, that are going to make me happy in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, I know everybody's attempting to do that, but I think um, the fearlessness that I'm experiencing is uh, is something that not, not a lot of people are willing to go through. Um, you, you have to kind of give up on yourself in order to become that 15 year old kid that was writing music for the first time um, I think a lot of the, 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 this death core suicide silence fan base I think a lot of them are going to be uh, I, I don't know either pleasantly surprised or they're going to be completely disgusted <laughs> um, I, I really have no place to understand what, why or what they're feeling, you know. I, as a deathcore writer, <laughs> as a person who's who's been doing deathcore since before deathcore was deathcore, uh, I've just been playing music. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, it's like I don't really understand that fan base. Uh, I understand that I've loved all sorts of music my whole life, and every time I wrote a deathcore record, all I was trying to do was write heavy music while doing a bunch of other stuff. I mean, my previous band. I sang all over the place, you know, I really experimented with my voice, I threw it all up and down, you know, I did one record with Suicide Silence, that was very traditional Suicide Silence, and uh, that's that, you know, Uh, now I'm back to going, being myself again, and that's always what I want to be, I don't want to put on any kind of, uh, I don't want to put on any kind of suit, so, I mean, if you're going to stop listening to my music because I'm tired of uh, playing your games, then, uh, and I guess you can suck my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That's the best attitude right there. <laughs> so re- recently in an uh, interview with um, with the deathcore band Carnifex, they said that Whitechapel and Suicide Silence are really the only deathcore bands uh, left, and that the rest of them have moved on to exploring different areas. Now, do you agree with that? Uh, absolutely not. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, as much as he's trying to, you know, like, be respectful or, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty flagrant statement. Um, I think, if anything, exploring outside of the deathcore sound is more deathcore than any deathcore band claims to be. Um, it, it, you know, deathcore started because we were not trying to be a traditional death metal band and not trying to be a traditional punk rock hardcore band. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to explore... The, the groove and the hip hop and, and break that on and um, the uh, the correlation between death metal and uh, and and gangster rap you know what I mean <laughs> like that's that, that, that to me is deathcore so <laughs> um, it, it, you know to, to sit there and say that is just I think it's just trying to get attention and press and that's cool you know I, I, I don't I don't I don't disagree with uh, with Scott in that, uh, you know, in saying that Count Effects is a deathcore band, but I mean, to sit there and say that, that they're the only ones holding it down, it's like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a uh, Viridus murder go out, going out and saying, like, let's make deathcore great again, and then <laughs> putting out a song that sounds exactly like their last record. It's just, yeah. uh, it's kind of negating the whole, the whole thing. It's, it's, it's lost its, its way, it, which is why I say the same thing about deathcore bands. It's like, I don't even know what, they're talking about <laughs> because it's very contradicting. Absolutely, man. So you guys are um, you're going out on the road doing a U.S. tour to uh, celebrate the new release that's coming up. Um, after you guys are done tearing around the U.S., what do you guys have planned on the horizon? Um, in March, we're going to go out to the U.K. and do a little bit more of the same to show them the new record and um, you know have a good time with them, party, thank them for 10 years of coming out to our shows. Um uh, you know, it's 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 uh, whatever the, whatever the whatever 
people are going to toss our way. Right now, we're just kind of uh, waiting for this record to come out and then to see, you know, who is willing to, to give us a shot, you know, that we really want to do some support tours. I, w- I would love to go back on tour with Corn, maybe Limp Biscuit, you know, um, go go out with Trivium or um, Metallica even, you know what I mean? It'd be mm. cool to actually hit some, hit some uh, places that we've never really seen as a band and um, I feel like this record has the potential of taking us to places that, um, you know, we've never been. So, um, really what, what, what I would like to see is, uh, is for this this band to keep, continue growing and continue being a force in the metal community, but um, I mean, really, uh, the, the intention is is just to continue writing. We we uh, if nothing comes up, we, we're going to go right back into the studio and write another record and continue being about five dudes in a in a group that play music together. You know, absolutely, man. That's uh, that's awesome, and I you know I hope the best for you guys um, out on your tour. I hope the best for you guys in uh, the future and all the fan receptions. Hopefully, they're all great. Um, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. All right. So we'll see you out there. Stay alive, brother.